it with a head kick, ends it with a submission. And well, of course you won a knockout, but the fight ended like this and he worked out. Shabina, Colombian Queen Marshall. Oh, there he is. There's the tap quickly, another That's submission right. finish. Boy. Mackenzie Dern. I'm, I'm ready for anyone I feel really champ material right now. Mackenzie Dern. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous. Listen to me, we're at it. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Hello. Take nine. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Matt and I are going to be joined today by Sabina Mazzo as well as Mackenzie Dern. And um, I just kept flubbing the intro because I'm stupid. No, stop it. Don't say that. Thank you, Matt. It's very kind. Jimmy, this is the first time we're ever talking to Sabina. Yes, it is. You know, Sabina Mazzo. That's a cool name. It is a cool name. Uh, She's fighting on this this, uh, Mackenzie Dern main event. Was this always the main event? We were talking before. Maybe it was. I just don't... um, and didn't realize it was. There's a couple of really good fights. Our buddy Randy Brown is fighting Jared Gooden. Um, oh! And, uh, yeah, Randy's coming off a, a, a win over uh, Oliveira. And um, well, that should be a great fight as well. Why don't well. we discuss the whole card later? Because I like sure. to keep everybody in suspense. And I'm like just reading about it now, so I'm getting excited. And I want to talk about each fight in detail. And uh, you know how much I love McCarthy Dern, because I am a jiu-jitsu man. Oh, she's amazing. I am. And she's nice, too. She's a nice she, person. She's just so great. With her. I love her. Too. But right now, Jimmy, right yes. this second, we got Sabina Mazzo. Let's get to know her. We haven't we never met her yet. Let's bring her on. We haven't met her yet. It's probably the problem. No. <laughs> let's, part, let's, let's get her in here. Hello. Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you, Sabina. Nice to meet you. Too. What's your name? Sorry, Matt, right? I'm, I'm Matt, and my that's my little friend, Jimmy. I'm Jim. Hey, Jim. Or Jim. If, but if you mix us up, it'll be a great insult to Matt, not me. If you, <laughs> if you, mix, if you mix us up. Where are you right now? I'm in the hotel right now, the UFC hotel. So, yeah, I just finished some training, you know, stretch a little bit, and then, you know, getting ready for all this media day. I'm, I'm really excited. The first Do you one. like media day? Fighters are interesting. Some fighters love media day. Some fighters, it, it's distracting and they don't like it. I mean, I think it's just part of the job. You know, you like it or not, you got to do it. So I really try to do it like with the best attitude possible and try to get the profit from it, you know, because I feel it's one of the opportunities you have to show yourself. And of course the fight, but the, the interviews is just part of it. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Sabina, people want to get to know you. You know, they want to know the person, you know, that's, that's fighting that cage. Where, where, what's the, um, what's the first dip- discipline that you started with, Sabina? So I started actually with jujitsu and uh, for jujitsu was like the first thing I tried in a, in a gym. You know, I didn't knew anything about martial arts or fighting or absolutely anything. And I just, you know, life took me to this gym and I tried uh, jujitsu. I tried other stuff. I didn't like it. I didn't like Muay Thai at the beginning. Um, but, you know, after I was like six months in jujitsu, I started boxing. I felt in love with it. And and I don't know. I feel like um, those two were like the really key things that engaged me in the sport. How old were you when you started training? I was 15, almost 16 years old when I started yeah was there anything that motivated you to do it was it just something you wanted to do or was it uh did somebody in your family train or what, what was it that made you want to do it no so uh there's absolutely no one in my family that trains or fight or do any other sport you know they always been like in business and stuff so I don't know I feel like since I was young I tried a lot of sports you know but I didn't engage that much I was very active I I tried everything, climbing, soccer, you know, I tried everything, but nothing really, you know, put that passion into it. And um, so, yeah, I think it was more like a decision I took, like as a, a teenager, I was like, oh, I'm going to try this, looks cool. And I did it. What was it like um, growing up in Colombia? 
man, um, I loved it. You know, I actually, I think I never told before, but uh, the first three years of my life, I grew up in Miami. Oh. And, but I was born in Colombia and I lived in Miami and then went back to Colombia when I was three, four years old. So um, I get to, to see this different worlds. And uh, so it was very interesting, you know, but I don't know. And Colombia was great. You know, I grew up more like in the countryside. I, I never lived in the city city. So for me, it was just um, always like connecting with the nature. I had dogs. I always tried, you know, uh, running in, you know, the forest almost and uh, riding my bike. So, yeah, it was kind of adventurous like that. What part of Colombia? Medellin. It's my city. Oh, okay. Uh, is, is that, that's like the biggest city. Is that bigger than Bogota? No, no, Bogota is oh. way bigger. But it's it? one of the like more, more like in, recognized cities in Colombia. And when you, you, you said something interesting, you talk about climbing, um, you talk about rock climbing. Yeah. Rock Did climbing. You... I tried different. I started like, just like the regular ones and then rock climbing. And then, you know, yeah. How long did you do that for? Um, no more than a year. You know, I was very young. I was like 12 years old. So it was no more than a year. Um, but I, I really like heights. So that was why I liked it. And and after that, I did uh, silks. That's like another, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but uh, it's also with, um, you might have seen in the circus, like this long. Uh, oh, stilts. Yeah, yeah, sure. Stilts, yeah. So uh, that's also with heights. And I I'm, i don't know, I really like it. So I was thinking about walking around with some stilts. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. A I'm a short man. So that's just so he can reach the sink. <laughs> don't say that in front of Sabina. That's not nice. I'm a five six man, so just walking around with stilts might I just might see how the other half lives, you know? I forget about that, Sabina. Anyway, back to well, rock. climbing the climbing thing, because this is why I'm asking about climbing. You did it when you were younger, but the finger strength you need to climb is incredible. It really strengthens fingers. Like I imagine that's got to help in jujitsu for grips. Uh, and, and for strength, when you, when you have that background, if you, if your fingers already are, are stronger than the average person. Yeah. You know, I feel all the sports I did, I can relate them to MMA, honestly, like you said, like the climbing, the silks too, you know, you really have to have a lot of strength in your core in the grip of your hands to hold yourself in, you know, in the air. So, um, yeah, I feel like everything I did is kind of connected and took me to the place I am. So, yeah. When you're on stilts, how do you get up in the air? Like, what's the what's the what's the way of doing it? Well, so you have basically it's two silks, two big ones, you know, and uh, there's very different forms of going there. But usually it's just uh, wrapping yourself in the silk. And uh, there's, of course, techniques and that's going to make you climb up you know but it's a lot of uh arm strength and core strength you know you can go up different ways but basically you you really have to use your arms wait a minute i think we're thinking the same thing matt we made it we misunderstood you you're yeah. saying silks it's silks yeah that's oh what. i okay you're talking Jimmy. about the silk things that people hang from Jimmy. yes no we thought you meant stilts that you walk because you said no, circus no, no, no. matt and i both thought you said stilts Jimmy. No wonder why she didn't get my joke. It wasn't the joke that was bad. I got, I got it, but no, it was not. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Then the joke was bad. <laughs> yeah. But my yeah. thing was, we thought stilts, but you no, meant no. silk. Sil okay, silk. That silks. makes more sense. But they both have something to do with heights. But stilts, I was wondering, because stilts aren't that high. It's a few feet. Um, but yeah, silks, you climb way up and you, 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 you it's like acrobatic. Yeah, exactly. Because the next question I was going to have was, why would anybody want to walk around on stilts? But yeah. you answered that. I, I, I wonder that, too. You know, I really have to ask someone that. <laughs> and, my, and you know what's funny is that, like, you hear about people that are afraid of heights. And you, peer, you hear about people that don't mind heights. But who the heck likes heights? Yeah. I never heard of anybody. Me neither. Heights. What made I mean, you it's, it's fear, you know, of course, I don't know if it's just the feeling of liking it because when I'm going up there, it's not like, oh, I love this. No, but it's just the adrenaline that goes on you. You know, you're up there and you really have to do things well. If not, you're going to fall and you're going to hurt yourself. So I don't know. It's kind of that adrenaline that that powers me, you know, and at the end, I like it. So, 
Yeah. When we said about, I'm sorry, not to get back to the still thing. My question was going to be, nah, it's not a question now, because no. I was so fascinated with her walking around on stilts. I was going to say, in jujitsu, you break fall. How would you break fall with stilts? But the no. question I'm, <laughs> let's get that out of our head about the whole stilts thing, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> did, did, did you ever, Sabina, did you ever watch videos of those guys who are like urban climbers and they climb buildings without any, uh, they just have like chalk. Oh yeah, no, that's insane. That's insane. That's uh, kind of risky, you know. I just leave it to them. I like to see the videos, but yeah, that's too much. <laughs> Would you ever do this? I had an ex-girlfriend years ago. We were in Vegas, and you know the tower in Vegas, the uh, the giant stratosphere tower. Yeah. You can jump off that. You can jump off it. You're harnessed in, but you can. It's like a controlled descent. Would you do that? I think so. Yeah. You know, uh, since I was young, my, my dad always took me to roller coasters and it took me like, uh, everywhere. So I think I would, you know, in the right time. I like, I already did like, um, um, what's the name of it? I like jumping from an airplane. Forgot the name. Skydiving. Skydiving. Yeah. Uh, I liked it a lot. I honestly want to learn a little bit more about that. So yeah, I, I, am. I, I like it. You, you sound like an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> it sounds like I, I mean we're not gonna you're not gonna be like the female uh, cowboy Cerrone are you are we gonna see you in one of those squirrel suits when you jump out and you fly <laughs> you oh man that's that's crazy that's another level I, I'm not there yeah do you have brothers and sisters I have one sister she's older now is she like you or like are your parents like you like were they like a lot of adrenaline or are you kind of uh different than anybody in the family um well in that sense we are kind of similar you know she likes adrenaline too but we are completely different you know we we yeah we we don't even look alike <laughs> well, how did your family and your mom and dad feel about you fighting uh well my mom is always like freaking out honestly but she supports me 100 percent. like from the beginning she supports me my dad supports me they like to watch the fights support you know, but, uh, but yeah, my mom gets super nervous and she just she always tells me, look, I, when you fight, I have to have like a bottle of some alcohol because I cannot <laughs> handle the fight. I cannot see you in that. So, but she supports so Yeah. So I'll tell you, you enjoy these things that give you that rush. Yeah. How, how, how do you, how, tell me about the feeling when you win a fight. How does that feel? Is that the, isn't that the ultimate yes yeah man yeah because i feel that victory it's it's not only the the 15 or 25 minutes you were there but like it's been a long time you know you're preparing for a fight you know like fight week for example it's, it's a lot of um hard work you're putting your cutting weight you're putting your body into you know a state that uh not a lot of people do mm -hmm. so you know stepping in there and doing your job that's man that's a uh, it's just the best feeling ever for sure yeah. And um, yeah, what did you want to do before? I'm always interested in what somebody wanted to do before. Like when you were a kid, what did you think you were going to wind up doing? Was there something you wanted to go to school for and then fighting just kind of is the direction you went in? Yeah. So I always liked uh, medicine. I always, I love biology. Honestly, I still study it, but uh, one of my plans was uh, going to medical school, you know, and go that direction, but fighting got in the way. So I'm here. And would you want it to be a doctor or do you want to do you yeah. want it to be on the lab end? No, I, I want it to be a doctor. Any kind in particular? Uh, well, in that time, I like to be surgeon, but honestly, sure. yeah, I, I don't know. I never studied, so I don't know. I watch a lot of those shows like um, 600 Pound Life, and then you watch the guy go in and do like stomach surgery. I, mean, I wouldn't have the confidence to do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, even no matter how much I knew, I couldn't go in there and cut somebody open and have the faith that I wouldn't screw it up. Yeah. Yeah. You got to so, work. <laughs> yeah. So you think you would have done well in medical school? I do think. Yeah. You know, I, I always had this since I was young that everything that I dedicated, I was doing well. You know, I had times I, I was the nerd in school and I did really good. And then I got tired and I was like, okay, no, whatever. I'm going to go do, I don't know, tennis, you know, and I dedicated and I focused on that. So I feel like where I put my eyes and my will, I, I, I achieve stuff. I'll tell you, you brought up that 600 pound life that I, don't, I watched that to keep me on a diet. I don't, that show is nasty. Hey, let me ask you, Sabina, 
uh, as a young lady, what are you watching on Netflix? I always like the fun. We always like to, or let you on, on any kind of streaming service. Are you watching any kind of series or anything? We always like to, me and Jimmy, we always like to get turned on to new shows or movies. Yeah. Or what are you yeah, watching? It's hard. It's hard. You know, I, I have some times that I can't handle anything and I just watch old movies. Oh, there's sometimes I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna try, you know. And these days I tried the the serpent, I think is the name of it. Ooh, I see. I like sorry. Yes. I like that one. The thing is that I kind of lose attention after like 30, 40 minutes. I'm like, that's it. I I have to do something different, you know. So it has to. I haven't finished. It's only like eight episodes, and it's been like two months or something like that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're not a surgeon, by the way. If you lose focus after 20 or 30 minutes, that'd be yeah. a very scary. <laughs> You'd be halfway through it. Hey, I'm fucking bored. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, that, that show, The Serpent, that was with the, uh, the guy, that's like based on a true story of the person that was drugging and tourists and keeping them uh, like ill and right. That's the one that yeah, was yeah, in, yeah. in Colombia. That was Thailand. Boy, way off. I knew it was some, somewhere foreign, but uh, yes, that was Jimmy. Very disturbing show, what she's told. Yeah, about. is it a true story or is it made up? It's, yeah, it's based on a true story, isn't it? I think so, but you know how is Hollywood? You never know. <laughs> you never know, but very disturbing nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, you never know. You watch something, you like, you get a strong feeling about it. You're like, oh, it was all bullshit. Yeah, I try to look online and whatever I watch and see if I can find out what's true and what wasn't true. And usually they take a little, a little license. Um, well, look, it was, uh, it's fun talking to you and, and, and getting to know you and good luck on Saturday. And um, you're, you're a really interesting person. And I'm looking forward to seeing this fight and uh, come back on with us again. It'd be good to talk to you again. Thank you very much. Yeah. And hopefully after this victory, I, I'll be back here in the show and I appreciate it. All right. Nice talking to you, Sabina. Thanks so much. Good care, Sabina. Bye. Bye. Yeah, you're right, Matt. I never met anybody who liked heights. Like, I mean, like who, like, I mean, people who don't mind them, but I've never met anybody who's like, I love heights. <laughs> Jimmy, we were way off with the stilts thing. We both, we both <laughs> heard it. We, and, and then she said circus. Oh my God, and, shit. We belong in a circus. <laughs> well, silks is a weird thing. Like, I've never heard that term in an athletic way before silks. I've never heard that. So obviously we both just heard stilts like idiots. And then I just started picturing her walking around on stilts. I'm like, why would you even want to do it? That's why I asked. Cause, and then she said, you wrap yourself up in them. I'm like in stilts, but I'm so unathletic that it's like, yeah, that could happen. I guess. I don't know. If you didn't catch on. I, the next question was going to be like how she breaks falls. If she falls, but she probably just thought we were a couple of idiots. She's right. The best is You're, she's a hundred percent right. We are. And my joke was with she goes, Oh no, I got it. <laughs> she got the joke. Uh, anyway. Yeah, she was like, No, no, no I understood. I, I it wasn't it didn't lose me. <laughs> that which made me very oh, happy. Shit. Uh listen to me. I got we have Kenzie coming on soon. Coming on soon. But we have a few minutes to talk about the fights this weekend. You know what I mean? If you want to do that. Yeah, sure, buddy. Let's do that. You wanna, did you see the many states of Newark yet? It's funny. I just started watching it um, before the show today. Right. So I, again, I'm only 10 minutes into it. So I, it's hard to say. So what's, oh, really? Only 10 minutes in? I have not heard good things, but I'm still going to watch it. You know what's funny, man? I heard the old, uh, the new Dune is coming out. So I tried to watch the old Dune. Dude, that's a rough one to get through. Like I, I don't to, remember it. Yeah, well, dude, it's, it, it's a rough one. It's, it, that's, I try to put it on when I'm shaving my head and shit. I'm trying to get through it. Just to kind of get up to speed. The new just one. to get done the with it, yeah. One. Yeah, the new one looks fucking great. Well, do you need to watch the original? Is it a remake or is it like a, a continuation? The book is, the book is famous, like a like a real from Frank Her Frank Herbert, is a famous like sci-fi thing from the from the, like the seventies or something. It's like the best book, one of the best, most acclaimed uh, sci-fi books ever. But obviously, the adaption was shy. So yeah. they're gonna they're doing it over and it looks amazing. It's got a lot of big actors and stars in it and stuff, but like Josh Brolin, I'm a big fan of him. And uh I don't know, it, it looks good. So I, I think I'm gonna I might abandon the old one and just get with the new one, you know. What movie did I see recently that I wanted to oh what did I just see that just came out? Talk to me, talk to me. It's, it's a superhero thing. What did you just see? Uh how Squid Game. Stop it. 
No, I didn't see Squid Did you? It's good. You might like it. I, yeah, I, you know what? Is I tried to watch it with the sub, and I did it with the dubbed voices, and I go, I'm out. No, no, watch it with the subtitles because the acting is so good, man. It's really, really intense. You know what? The, with the subtitles, it takes you right out. I mean, not with the subtitles, with the with the voice dubs. Fuck the dubs. I, I couldn't watch that either. Watch with the subtitles because they're all really great actors. I'm going to do that because it was it was not easy to get through when it's uh, I start, started watching. I turned it right off. I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to read it. <laughs> but uh, I watched Venom 2 with the family, and it was fun. If you enjoyed the first Venom, you'll enjoy the second one. I think it's an upgrade. It was fun. I li- I really like Tom Hardy. And the, the way he interacts with the, the Venom thing is cute. It's like a, it's like a, it, I don't know. It's like a, it's almost like he's talking to himself, it's like a personality type thing, but it's not because it's a, it's a being attached to him. But anyway, and then Willie Harrison's always great. So he was like the, the bad guy in it. And uh, I, I enjoyed it. It's fun. It was just a fun movie. I'm not saying it's phenomenal. I'm just saying it's fun. It's no uh, Suicide Squad, the Suicide Squad. It's not that. Because that was good. That was real. That was great. I never saw that. Oh my God, it's so great. The, the end of that movie gets me emotional. Why? Well, there's a part when Ratcatcher 2 says something and she has a flashback with her and her father. And it's just kind of a Jimmy, Jimmy, it gets you emotional. I think Does it? Look at this. This is not good. Because notice how my shirt looks nice now. But look at this when I go to fix the collar. Look at this. What's wrong with it? <laughs> no, there's a hole in it. I just saw a hole in my shirt. Hold on. Oh. Look. Oh, yeah, a little one. Yeah. See, well, there's supposed to be a hole in it or your head wouldn't come through, but I, I know what you mean now, the other hole. <laughs> you've, been, you've been coming at me lately with some fucking good zinger. No, nah, that was a good one. Come on. <laughs> Jimmy, let's discuss the fights. Okay. Let's do it. Sure. Let's discuss them. I want to discuss them here. All right. Um, okay, buddy. And then we get Mackenzie Dern on. Do uh, you want to just discuss the main card? What do you want to do? Sure. Let's start with the uh, the very. Oh wow, wow! Phil Phil Hayes is Hawes, fighting yeah. Hayes, right? Hawes. Hawes? Yep. Let's call the whole. It's Hawes. Yeah. Oh, in Venom Two, they had a little scene when it's like like tomato, 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 tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. When I was going on, you know, I thought of me singing that. All right, Jimmy. So you got Phil Hawes. Versus Duran Wynn. Now, listen. Yeah. As much as I like Phil Hawes, why do you think I'm going to go with Duran Wynn? Tell me. Tell me why you think I'm going with him. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Tell me why. Ah, I think. Why do you think I'm going? If he needs a pair of gi pants, I can lend him mine. You understand? Because he's a littler fella. He's a little nugget like me. Listen to me. Team short and stocky. Phil Hawes has a seven and a half inch reach and is um, six inches taller. So, and obviously the leg um, is going to be a lot longer too, I'm sure. Oh, okay, I got you. Deron win decision. I'm going to take... Um, Hawes, second round stoppage due to that reach. Well, listen, man, I think you should think about your pick, and I think you should pause with the Hawes right there. Bang, bang. I'm telling you, right back at you. You want to do some cringy shit? I'll, I'll play some cringy shit. With I you. don't mind. I like cringy shit. Yeah, because we're going to just be like this with each other. Yucky. All right, listen, let's go to the next one. Oh, well, now we just talked to Sabina. I like where her head's at. I do, you know? Yeah. Uh, and she's fighting, and Marina Sazo, Sabina Sazo, and she's coming off a loss. We didn't really discuss that. We should have made yeah. that work. We were too busy getting to know about Columbia. Uh, she, and she's fighting uh, Maria Agapova. Agapova. Yep. Okay. She's coming off a loss, too. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, they both got something to prove. Yeah. You know? I'm going to say Sabina by decision. I'm going to give her a second round sub. Uh, Will you give it what you like? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying what I said. All right, let's see what we got. All right, this is interesting. Oh, Tim Elliott. Big fan, Tim Elliott. 
Awkward MMA. I can't believe he's six and nine in the UFC. That's hard to. Yeah, but he's entertaining. He always is fun to watch. No, he's always a fight away from snatching a limb. Uh, Four and one in the UFC, 28 years old. Second stint in the UFC after being released in 2019. He's got something to prove. He looks like he did the right thing when he was out. You know? Mm -hmm. But Tim Elliott, I think, you know, listen, James Krause is not is not giving him bad advice. He's giving him good advice. And with James Krause in his corner, I think things are going to happen. Good things. Good things are going to happen. I'm going to take Nikolai by uh, decision. All right. I think Tim Elliott, Tim Elliott by submission. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay? You hear what I said right there? Yeah. I know you're looking at that Brazilian, Brazilian flag going, oh, but he's a Brazilian guy. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu. Okay? But, you know, listen to me. You say tomato, I say tomato, 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 tomato. Hey, let's call the whole thing off. <clears throat> so, Jimmy, the next one is Randy, our friend Randy Brown. He's such a cute I'm going to be sweet to teach when you smile at me like that. Uh, we got Randy Brown. Yes, we do. Versus Jared Gooden. Both coming off a win and a loss in their last two fights. You know what? This is kind of, listen, if I'm a little biased, I see Randy Brown. Randy Brown is at Sarah BJJ often. Right. He's at uh, Sarah BJJ working his ground game, you know, when he's not with his sensei Nardu. Right. You know, that's his guy. Nardu's a good friend of mine. Nardu Debra. I like him a lot. Very zen like. But uh, he's been on the show. But this is the thing I'm going to say, I'm going with Randy Brown in this. Okay, yeah. Randy Brown is going to win, and it's going to be fucking crazy, dude. Second round finish in a, in a fucking bloodbath. This fight's got to, this fight yeah. is going to be insane. Someone's not walking out of there. And I'm saying Randy Brown's going to be victorious. Randy by decision. Now, we have the main event to talk about, but I think before we talk about the main event, because it would be very, very weird Ooh. to talk about the main event Ooh. while we leave the uh, main events, half the main events sitting in the waiting room. That would be silly of us. Very silly. Let's get her in here. Hi, Mackenzie. Hello, Mackenzie. Hey, how are you guys? Welcome Hi. back. She's Thank always you. smiling, Jimmy. She's always yeah. smiling. She should be. That's She's 11 and one. She's a killer. Yeah, that too. <laughs> but the way, honestly, because the weight is good, then everything's happy, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the weight's good. You feel good with the weight? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm 117 this morning. So Friday 115, still have tomorrow and then Friday. So, woo, that's good. Now, what, what's, if you, you know that, so you know that this cut is going really well, what would be a bad place for you to be today? Like, oh, this is going to be a hard one uh probably like uh maybe seven pounds over like i was in 2000 <laughs> before i got pregnant and i had those bad weight cuts oh wow that would be bad i was like 120 120 i don't know maybe seven like two days before the fight so that was bad <laughs> wow you had to lose 12 pounds wow so what what did you do differently like is there a nutritional thing you're doing or what, what's like making this a lot easier for you or are you just do, starting it at a better time well, it's, I'm very lucky because I'm, every woman's experience during the pregnancy is different, of course. Uh, but during my pregnancy, uh, I didn't train. I was, I mean, I've been training since I'm three years old, you know? So I totally was, not that I was burnt out, but I was like, I didn't make weight on my last fight in Rio. Um, There's all these critics, you know, all these things. So when I found out I was pregnant, it was a big surprise. I'm like, man, I need some time to just yeah. stay away from it at all, you know? So I didn't train. And I gained three pounds in my pregnancy. So that was very, very little. My daughter, she just sucked everything out of me, like growing inside of me. You know, she, my, all the fat and muscle too. You know, I was so skinny when I was, when she was born. So I was able to kind of just start from zero. Um, and then, yeah, my daughter is my biggest motivation, you know, just to stay professional. At that, that time, I was just like partying and having fun and taking all the hype and all the tension from, you know, as being like new UFC upper, upcoming, you know, um, didn't really think about, you know, the belt or anything like that. Now I think about the belt. I think about being like Hall of Fame, all these things. And so it's just a different, more mature, you know, more mature fighter. 
uh, woman, mom, wife, uh, you realize that, okay, that style that I was living, you know, when it was just me by myself, I could win one fight or the other, you know, but just very temporary. I lost sponsors. I lost fans, you know, like so fast, you know, and now, now that I have my family, it's so value to, valuable for me. It's like, okay, this is our circle and we're going to go all the way to the belt. And you start seeing how the things like, okay, uh, win after win, like submission, submission, things are flowing, you know, you start to attract people next to you. Like I have coach Perilla now that's just making everything easier, you know? So it's just um, easier to stay focused, you know? So definitely this new like focus for my daughter, my family is helping me to just stay on track with my weight and stuff. Not that I don't have fun. I still have fun, you know? I'm still, right, right. Yeah, well, and- <laughs> go ahead, Jimmy. No, no, no say, go ahead, Beth. I was just going to say, she posed, that's why you've been posting champ mom. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. it's yeah. good it, it keeps you grounded you know because yeah, yeah. now you have, you have your unit and now you got to ch- concentrate on what's on what's ahead of you it, yeah. it, that's good it's less distractions. yeah and you know i think i think people saw a lot of potential in me but they saw the potential in me before i even saw the potential in me you know like i kind of went into the ufc i kind of went into mma just because people are like oh you should do it you do so good you know i was winning everything in jiu-jitsu so kind of looking for something new like more a bigger goal you know just test myself you know um but not because i was in there like okay thinking i'm gonna go and be like the champ and i think like then that's why everyone's that's why they signed me before i even did one uf one mma fight you know they like signed me already put you know because people i think they saw like okay she can she has potential but she needs to find that and then now i realize like, okay now i understand what what people saw in me you know so now i just and start to get there and this is just the beginning of you know, my first mini event i'm so excited we we're really hoping to get here uh i think all the ufc fighters when you go in and we sign the posters we're hoping like one day our face will be on yeah. the post. so it's really really cool do you feel uh, do you feel an additional pressure being the main event because now all the media stuff you're, you're the biggest name so it do you feel like this additional pressure or obligation because you have to do more media than normal no, it's it's almost the same media, you know. It's been about the same. So uh, I definitely like the pressure, though. I've always fought like even in jujitsu, the big events. I've always fought better than like the regional events, you know. I think I feel more pressure when it's just like you kind of have like this o- obligation to win, you know, and stuff like that. But when you you need to like really step up to the plate and show and prove yourself, um, then I, I kind of grow to that, you know. So I'm really excited. I was hoping for this opportunity. I think now I I have like a lot of fans, you know, but I think now. If anyone didn't know me, they'll know me now, you know, because I mean, they may not even watch too much UFC, but at least you're going to watch the main, the main fight, right? <laughs> and since you're one loss, you had one loss was decision. You've had uh, four straight wins, three of them have been submissions. So you've been on a roll since like, like that loss. Did that change anything for you or did that change your thinking at all? Because you really, you've been on a tear since then. Yeah. I mean, it's just people ask me like, oh, do you regret, you know, like, is that something you wish you could take off, you know, like that? to come back to the zero and man, that like one loss is so good for me. You know, it's, it's part of my story, you know, of like my comeback, you know, even though I wanted to come back early, you know, and also too, I mean, it was very good for me to just kind of see the people around me during my pregnancy was kind of, um, during my pregnancy was kind of like, you see people pampering you a little bit, you know, and you didn't realize that people are pampering, you know, like as, as a mom, I think they don't know, they see the baby, they're crying and they don't know if they should push you more, if they can really hit you, you know, in sparring and all these trainings. And I'm kind of like, man, I want the people to really be able to like push me, you know, I don't want people to just say yes to me all the time and say what they, they think you, you want to hear, you know, I really need someone to always be like honest with me the whole time. So it's good. It's so important that less I learned in my life. And I think that helped me evolve so much. I love that you're, that you're with Jason Perillo because I think he's, I think he's, uh, I think he's great. I think he's phenomenal. I don't think he's talked about enough. I know we talk about him a bunch, you know. <laughs> I know he, he got Bisping to the title. He's been with a BJ Penn forever back in the day. But Jason Perillo is a great coach. And what impresses me a lot with you, Mackenzie, is I love your jujitsu. I love it like everybody else loves it. I'm a jujitsu person. But this is one thing that, that I'm not going to say surprised me, but you are very game standing up. There is some ju- world-class jiu-jitsu people that are phenomenal in their jiu-jitsu, but don't like getting tough. Don't like getting seeing their own blood. Not that you like it, but I'm telling you, when you're scrapping standing up, you don't look desperate for the takedown. You look <laughs> like it, you're and you're dangerous. You, you people that are afraid of the floor. I'm not, I don't want to say the wrong name. I don't want to throw it, but I forget. I know I'm, it's in my head. Blonde girl. I'm, I'm, I don't want to say Yoda. 
I, don't, I forgot who it is. I'm sorry, but you laid her down with a punch and then finished on the floor. So how was the transition from going to pure grappler to, to the striking? How'd you make that transition? Cause you're doing great with it. Yeah. I think, I think the most important part was kind of, I got that, like that kind of that phase of my life. I was just kind of, okay, trying this and really feeling if I could handle getting punched in the face was really important. Cause I kind of got that out of the way, um, you know, with, not so high ranked people actually none of us were ranked at the time you know um going through the events like um lfa and victor and all these things and this is my first couple of fights in the ufc you know which, yeah, i think my first fight in with ashley Leota, i'm just like punching and going at it and you know i I, try, I think i tried one takedown of the whole fight you know so now um like you said with perillo he, he's just he's such a great coach and i think my ex trainer you know my last trainer that's when the when the people are when the coach not all the time but a lot of time I feel that when the coach they maybe they don't have too big of a name for themselves they have something like to prove they really want their fighter to win with something that they taught them you know and that they make it this champion and Perillo he's already had his name he's been there like you said with exactly. BJ Penn Chris Cyborg, Bisping you know all these people I was like man I hope he wants to train me you know i feel like i've been out of like the mma lab kicked out like the black house you know i'm like i'm hoping this guy doesn't think that i'm a problem fighter you know that he'll <laughs> want to train me and thankfully it's like the best thing that's happened because he doesn't try to make me a striker you know he doesn't like want me to go in there and to knock them out but all of a sudden like i've been with him and i've had three submissions you know three first round submissions and people are like man your your striking's done better i'm like well they haven't even seen that much because i've submitted in the first round with jiu-jitsu yeah. you know so it's like it's the little striking that um, I'm showing all because of his, he helps me, my striking um, set up for me to be the athlete that I am. That's a submission grapple. So he doesn't take me away from my roots. He doesn't try to make me a striker, but it's scary when you have someone come at you and throwing instead of just like one haymaker that I used to throw, throwing like these combos, you know, and like now I understand yeah. striking is the same as ground. You know, you still have setups, you still read things, you kind of, you trick them, you feign, you do. And I'm like, okay, well, jiu-jitsu is the same, you know? So now he got me this mentality that the people who stay the whole two month camp doing like take down the fence now they have to think about these hands a little bit and then the takedowns are easier that's why i've got these three round submissions you know not just because my takedowns have gotten better i haven't even trained that much wrestling just because my hands have gotten better you know yeah they have to watch out for your hands yeah sure like for doom yeah. fabricio for doom always had a great freedom to throw punches because he had no fear of being taken down it's the same with you you have, you have a, a great freedom standing up because if it goes to the ground you're even in better shape yeah, like my fight with Randa Marcos was my first fight with Perillo. I had left Black House with three weeks before the fight. Um, in just three weeks, he got me so confident with the strike. I came out and I did like this flying head kick. I like fell and fell on my butt, you know, but that was just how confident I was standing up. You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go out there and just like throw and, you know, and he's like, okay, let's calm down a little bit, you know, but he got me so so confident because I, I was seeing things I was I had like a base and all these things and then thankfully she went into my guard and we got the submission but yeah I was ready to throw down if we needed to and even like when I broke my nose he's like no you're fine you know so I have such a good connection with with coach you know he definitely I mean he lied to me on that moment but that was a good lie <laughs> <laughs> it's so great to have a guard isn't it those those people that are deathly afraid to be taken down when you've been on your back your have most of your life just snatching limbs you're not that afraid of being taken down so it gives you that freedom like jimmy was talking about how how verdum and yourself you could let go because worst case scenario they go down to your world anyway so it's very yeah, exciting yeah it's so good you know definitely we like try to take care you know you see like i don't know if you guys saw like ryan hall he um ryan hall he yeah. does a lot of heels and stuff oh yeah and sure yeah, it works good, you know, but in his last fight, he was just kind of like on the ground, like a little bit too, you know, just letting these punches come. You know, I'm a little bit more like I love leg locks. I love these things. But I mean, I've gotten punched a couple of times on the ground, too, you know, in sparring and stuff like that. So I definitely know, you know, you have to fight the, the right part, you know, we're attacking arm bars. So my plot is let's get those arms tangled up a little bit, too, you know, not just on the legs, you know, because then you get those ground and pounds. So it's hard. It's hard for the jiu-jitsu people to let go of our 100% jiu-jitsu and like you said to not have a problem have a chin and all these things yeah yeah no you need it all but it's i i hear you to be threatening off your back is is is, is priceless though but it takes time that's why these people with the shortcuts are just 
Well, well just, you know, work on your sprawls, work on just getting up. The, as yeah. you, people coming up develop a dangerous guard. You know, they don't, they yeah. don't know the, you know, the importance of a dangerous gra- uh, bottom game, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's something that, like, man, you see, for example, you slip and fall. Even they know that you're a ground person, but it's that instinct, like, oh, I'm going to come in ground and pound them, you know? So it's something that's very, uh, unless they're totally, like, 100% focused, maybe eight out of 10 times the people are going to jump into the guard, you know, and think that they're just going to ground and pound. So it's very, um, it's uh, the only thing is the judges, right? The judges, they don't understand that sometimes like, okay, they're on the bottom, but they're actually doing more damage than the person on top, you know? So, but thankfully I don't like to go to the judge's decision. I'm always like, let's go, let's go finish first round. You know, I don't think we're going to go five rounds in this fight. I think we're going to go just once. So, but I'm ready to go five. Let's do it. <laughs> is this your first five round fight? My first five round in fight. Yes. So now, was excited. the training different for you, or do you train typically for more than three rounds? Yeah, we've been training for more than for a five round fight for a while now, you know, just hoping, you know, that the opportunity would come soon, or even just like, hey, if we get like a last minute call or something like that, we'd be ready. So, right, and I right, like right. Just, it's so fun for me. So, Perilla, like, he enjoys like watching the girls just go at it and punch each other and trying to kill each other. He's like, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's it, you know. So, he's <laughs> wanting me to train far with the guys the girls with everyone you know so Cheeto Vera he trains with us so it's fun he's a great dude Marina is uh six and there's some killers in the top uh four as well of course as well as uh Rose so anybody after this fight and I know you have to get through this fight first but you really you there are no easy fights uh at the top of this uh division and do you see yourself obviously you want to fight for a title this is your 12th uh 13th fight what do you think your path is? Like, if you wanted to get a title shot, what do you think? What do you think the necessary stuff to do would be? No, I think for a title fight, for my next fight, I just need to go in there and do like a perfect performance. You know, uh, get in, get out, just kind of wipe the wipe the octagon clean. You know, like okay, next one kind of thing. Now I'm not in like a rush, so definitely uh, that would be like my fifth win, straight win. I'll be kind of tied with Carla Sparza. She has five straight wins. Carla was a ex-champion, you know, the first show champion. But um, if, let's say I win this fight, that's why I'm thinking this fight for me, this is a title fight, you know, because it's so, um, it's going to be a big difference, you know, on who goes for the title next and all that, that. So I'm not even thinking about Rose. I'm thinking this is a title fight for me because if I get past this, like, good, you know, I'm going for that title, you know. So, um, but if I win and maybe like, uh, it's a little bit hard fight. I, we see some holes. I don't have a problem getting an, another fight in. Right. Trying to just, you know, do our homework and really be 100% prepared to be the champ and stay the champ. You know, I don't want to champ and then lose it on the first, um, you know, defense. You know, I want to be the champ, maybe go up a weight, um, just see different things that we can uh, accomplish as the champion. Well, Mackenzie, congratulations on your first main event. Uh, you against Marina Rodriguez this Saturday night. This is a, that's a really, really good fight. Um, and I'm happy for you that you got the main event. And, um, you know, good luck in this fight. And I look forward to seeing you eventually get a title shot. I would love to see you against uh, Rose or Wiley or whoever is at the top. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Always great talking with you. And let's do it. I hope to put on a good show for you guys. Okay, Mackenzie. Nice talking to you. Bye, okay, Mackenzie. All right, bye. Bye-bye. I'm taking McKenzie. I'm going to say second round submission. I was going to say that, but since you said it, you know what? I'm going to give her a first round submission. Man, well, you listen, you say first, sec- if you say first, I say second. It's fair. Second. First. First. Second. Let's call the whole thing. Oh, Jimmy, I love you so much. I love uh, you too. Who are you picking? You, so you picked her. I picked, we picked, we'll pick McKenzie. Mackenzie, first round. What do you want to plug, my friend? Uh, just, if you want to uh, see me, I'm going to be in Atlanta this Thursday, Friday, Saturday at the Punchline, and uh, go get yourself a uh, Cameo, cameo.com slash Jim Norton. I'm not on the app. I'm only online. Hey, man. I'm on everywhere on Cameo, Matt Sarah. And uh, Matt Sarah BJJ on Instagram. Um, Sarah BJJ. I'm sorry, I burped when I did that. I belched inside. Uh, Sarah BJJ. Dot com if you want a fucking t-shirt or something you know sure and i'm always at my school spreading 
jujitsu love. Jimmy, the fights of this weekend, do we do yep. a proper read on those? I think so, yeah. Oh, and I'm sorry, the guy on the Dana White, I know we just to get the, the, the winners who got the contract because I the fights were great, the fights were fantastic. Uh, Mike Malot, uh, Malot looked phenomenal, he looked fucking phenomenal, dude. And uh, he did a uh, like a, a guillotine in like 39 seconds around one. He's the striking coach over at Alpha Male, and now he's jiu jitsu's phenomenal, man, amazing. And uh, Carlos Hernandez won by split decision, also awesome. Um, who else? Fernie Garcia. He won PKO, even though he missed. Wait, who missed weights on that one? Oh no, no, Josh Weems is the one who missed weight on that. And then, uh, really quick, who else got the? Uh, who else fought? Uh, Joseph Holmes. Nice, very nice submission. Rear naked choke in the second round. Had to deal with some adversity in the first round, but got it done in the second round. And I was very impressed with. Uh, Gennaro, uh, Val Gennaro Valdez took out Patrick White with uh, in the second yeah, round. Nice TKO, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy. So, hey, man, congrats to everybody who got those yes. contracts. And I'll talk to you over the weekend, my friend. Yes, I can't wait for these fights. Take care, Matt. Bye, Jimmy. See you, buddy.